Hi there, welcome to this week, which is part two of the stifle, where we have a look at some of the problems that you can see in your horse when it has stifle issues. Okay, last week we looked at the particular joint and I'd like to put in a special thanks at the moment to Sky, who has done a much better job at drawing these um, bones and muscles and ligaments than I did last week. So she can give you a bit better idea. So thank you very much, Sky. Super talented young girl. We looked last week at the structure of the stifle and the femur bone, the tibia bone, and the patella or the kneecap, and this being the stifle area with everything related to it. We also had a quick look at the way this works in conjunction with each other and how it's really hard to identify any of the problems within the stifle area because of how it affects all of the other joints through the reciprocal and the stay apparatus in the horse. Okay, so what are some of the common problems that you can have in the stifle area. Well it's really quite similar to our knee as I discussed before. So um, the meniscus which is a cartilage which cushions between the femur and the tibia, um, that can become torn, pulled, swollen just like ours. Um, any ligament strains and pulls as well and obviously this kind of stuff can only be seen through ultrasound in your vet. But ligament tears and ligament strains are also relatively common. Some of the other problems we can see are things like um, OCD or osteochondrosis disease in a growing foal where we get some maybe bone cysts or abnormal um, bone growth in this area as well. And obviously all of these issues you need either an ultrasound, an x-ray or even arthroscopic surgery to actually get deep in and diagnose the problem effectively. So most of the causes of those, if they're not genetic, are trauma or injury. So quite often as a rider, you've seen an accident or you've been involved in an accident or you've seen something happen to your horse. So you're really quite aware that um, some trauma has happened to this area. The other problem that we often have is what we call um, upward fixation of the patella, stifle lock, sticky stifle, loose stifle, any of those terms. And this is quite common in the horse. And what this is, is when the horse is in this particular position, which is extended, the patella locks down and the ligaments around this patella lock over a ridge at the top of the femur and lock that patella in position. Remembering from last week, this is a really necessary um, piece of mechanism, I guess, for the horse, because this is what enables them to rest the other leg or sleep rest while they're standing up. The problems occur when the patella doesn't release as soon as the horse goes to move forward. So sometimes this is delayed and it gets locked and the horse struggles to lift its foot up and go into the flexion mode and bring the stride forward. So as the horse starts to walk off, that initial movement is when sometimes that patella can get locked locked or fixed into position. So what you might see from the ground when this occurs is a shortened stride in the horse. There are other gait abnormalities and I'll go into those a bit more detail later. But what's actually happening is this leg that is going from this extended position into a flex position is getting a little left behind, which means there's not enough time for that full stride. So you will see a shorter stride at that moment. And often the shorter the stride, the more pronounced this problem is. So if you're looking, if you're looking to see if your horse has some of this problem, often a better spot to actually see this is by looking at the hock. As you can see, this stifle area is covered by a lot of muscle and soft tissue, yet the hock isn't. But we know that these two joints move together and they move together through the use of this recipro reciprocal system of this ligaments here and the ligaments down the back. And if we remember, oh, let's see if we can, thanks Jeff. Can I have this? We get flexion of both of these joints at the same time. Yeah, thanks. And down. 
So sometimes what you will see in the horse is as if you keep your eye on the hock rather than the stifle because it can be easy to see you can actually see the hock wobble a bit as the patella releases so if you're watching for this in your own horse you can see a little bit of a, um, a wobble or a quiver in the hock as that patella releases from the stifle and it's noticeable here once you have noticed it in the hock and then you can actually pick the moment of the patella um, releasing you can then move your eye up to the stifle and often you can then see the patella release from here and move up higher okay so often this stifle problem is more noticeable in the canter and some of the ways you can have a look for this is if you're cantering the horse in the sand if you're on the ground or on the lunge the horse can sometimes look like that limb buckles slightly and as it buckles you'll see sand flick up in the air as it takes a little bit longer to get that hoof off the ground. Quite often sometimes you'll also see a bit more of a jerk upwards of that leg almost uh, mimicking a mild string halt action as the hock suddenly um, lifts after the release of the patella. If you're not looking at your horse from the ground you will often feel this sort of buckle or drop in a horse in a tight corner or sometimes a downward transition. If it's very severe you'll notice this because the horse won't be able to disengage the patella at all and will actually walk with quite a stiff leg um, and not be able to put that leg into flexion. So if this is something you notice in your horse, obviously step one is a proper veterinary diagnosis. But what are some of the things that can actually affect the um, stability of the kneecap or patella? Number one is the level of fitness. So if you're noticing this in your horse when it's unfit versus fit, sometimes it's simply a matter of strengthening all the muscles that are supporting this area. I often see this in practice where you can see a dip in the musculature around the quadriceps and a, 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 a more distinct slope, I guess, from the top of the tuba sacrale. So often we find with the dippy horses and a dippy horse here, there's not enough musculature to keep that stifle really stable. So the other time that you might see this is due to conformation. If a horse has a particularly straight conformation in the hind end, or if you're looking at a young horse that's going through a bum high phase and their hind end is a lot straighter, that puts the joint in, I guess, an overextension or overextended mode and it does make it harder for the horse to move into the flexion. So you may find this problem then. Again, if the leg is extended more than normal, such as going downhill or going into a downward transition where that a moment of extension is just prolonged a bit more than normal. You're also more likely to notice this problem in the canter rather than walk or trot again because of the prolonged moment of extension. Obviously um, trauma or injury can cause problems in this area as well. So what do I look for in my horse if I'm a little bit suspicious that we could have a sticky loose patella? Firstly, a feeling of short striding under the saddle. So we're feeling either one or even both legs short striding. Remember, this can occur in either one leg or both at the same time. You can also look for a toe drag in your horse. This sometimes means it's delaying the flexion. So you can look not only at their gait, but actually if there's a lot of wear around the toe area on their hoof or shoe, the arc of swing of the horse at any gait will be slightly lower if they have this problem as they're trying to not flex their limb quite so much. So the flight arc, obviously any swelling or heat or pain. And as I said, it's much more obvious at canter. So any resistance in canter, tail swishing, um, throwing head in the air, bucking, uh, kicking out, and particularly going into canter transitions. If you're getting a lot of resistance at this, it's really worthwhile investigating um, the stifle area. And lastly, any resistance of the horse walking downhill or backing up will also indicate that the stifle or the patella is causing a little bit of issue. Okay, so here's where I promote my ebook, 
Um, if you're looking for a really good strengthening program at a really affordable price, hop on over to my website. I'll put the link down below. This is an ebook that goes into great detail about strengthening your horse's stifle area all the way from stable rest up into ridden work. This is something that you can have a look at getting and enter at any point in the program. So if your horse has had surgery and is being confined, you can start there or you can have a look down and get halfway through the program. If your horse is tolerating those exercises really well, you can then perform the strengthening and ridden exercises from there down to help. But anything you can do to strengthen this area will help with this loose stifle. Not only will it make a better ride for you, but it's gonna make your horse a whole lot more comfortable. Okay, thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click on the like button, and I'll see you all next week.